Salut everyone! In this video, I'm gonna be talking about LMD7. LMD, if you are new to the game, stands for Linux Mint Debian Edition. So instead of having Linux Mint based on Ubuntu, now you can have Linux Mint based on Debian. And this one, the number 7 called GG, is based on Debian 13. And you know I had a really good review of Debian 13. And I have to say, I've been pretty surprised by LMG. It's pretty good, but it's not perfect. Are you ready? Let's get into it. As always, we're going to start with a little bit of context. And the first thing we really need to get into is why do we need a Debian edition of Linux Mint? Linux Mint is doing a pretty good job uh, while living within Ubuntu. But this project, really, its goal is to ensure that the Linux Mint can still continue to deliver the same user experience even if Ubuntu was ever to disappear. And, and this, I think, is really interesting because not only it's a proof of concept that Cinnamon and Linux Mint can survive Ubuntu, but it can also show the fact that it's non-dependent to only one distro and it's working on Debian. So obviously, like we know that Ubuntu is a derivative of Debian, even if it's not uh, really Debian anymore, like it did evolve for a, a, a lot of different reasons compared to Debian. And I have to say that without uh, spoiling the whole video, that this experience on Debian is pretty similar. It's actually surprisingly similar to the experience you would get on Ubuntu uh, Mint. And the thing you will notice with this LMD uh, edition, it's like it's locked on Cinnamon. They didn't port the Mate Linux Mint or the XFC version of Linux Mint to Debian. It's only the Cinnamon one. So don't look for it. It just doesn't exist. Now, when it comes to the release cycle and the overall like support of LMD versus like Linux Mint, for LMD, we are really looking at a two year cycle. So what it would really do, you're going to follow the update of Debian. When you have the release of Debian 12, let's say like six to seven months after, well, you're going to have the release of LMD. And in this case, uh, uh, Bookworm was uh, for LMD 6. Now we are at uh, Trixie, aka Debian 13, and we have the release of LMD 7. So what it really means, it means that the support of Cinnamon itself will be a focus on the lifespan of Debian, and then you're going to get only the LTS support regarding like security update from Debian. In reality, you have a two year lifespan for Cinnamon, and then you have a five year lifespan total if you want to stay on this version of Cinnamon, plus the security update after uh, the end of life of LMG7. If you want to get really like technical, and because obviously we did it during the live stream, I had to, to play with it, I did a little bit more. And uh, if you want to see how to transform your uh, LMG7, into uh, Debian 4 key with Plasma 6.5. I really invite you to go uh, watch the full stream. It was a really like a funny experience. But I digress. Uh, if, if you look at the technicality of Linux Mint, really, it's it's a Debian 13 uh, with all the repo enabled, plus the backport repo. And you will see it's, it's quite important. We're going to talk about it uh, later in the video. And on top of that, you have the repo dedicated of all the Cinnamon desktop environment and all the application, plus certain applications like they, they took left and right. I'm thinking about Firefox, for example, but I will explain in detail what it's all about. But really, this is what it is, right? So I, I don't want to minimize their work. I think, I think it's actually incredible. But if you think that, for example, you could install Debian 13 and just install Cinnamon, you won't get the same experience because this repository from the Linux Mint team not only provides the latest, latest version of Cinnamon, but it also provides all the nice customization of Linux Mint. And I also did that during the stream because I thought like, why would I install LMD7 if I can install Debian and put, for example, like 
cinnamon on it. Like, why, why would I install Linux Mint ever? Well, this is the difference, right? So this repo from the Linux Mint team adds a lot of value when it comes to the overall like environment and customization of Cinnamon. As always, we're going to start with the pro and this distro has way more than you think. The first thing I need to mention is the fact the installation was fluid, great, and nobody got to touch my bootloader. I know it has been a recurrent joke during my stream, but I noticed like some distro, they will just go and try to like uh, play with my bootloader because I have a lot of like NVMe and SSD on my PC. And somehow when I indicate during the installation that I want to keep everything within one hard drive or one SSD, some of them, they will go and destroy or alterate my main bootloader. It has been a, a real pain. So this installer was super clean and he has this little option that let you choose where the bootloader is going to be installed. And this is a big plus in my book because the last uh, distro we tried live was Zorin 18. And guess what? It did alter the bootloader of one of my overdrive slash over partition. And this is really annoying. And LMD7, aka GG, I like this name too, is not doing that, so it's a big plus. The second pro is when you think about Debian 13 as a base, you think about Firefox ESR. So Debian provides a version of Firefox, which is known as kind of like a LTS version of it. And it, it, it's pretty ugly. It's pretty old. It doesn't have most of the latest feature because it's an old, like secure version of Firefox, which is fine. But um, the Linux Mint team decided to provide their own packages regarding Firefox and you won't have this outdated version. You're going to have the latest Firefox version delivered out of the box, which is pretty cool. When you come to the kernel itself, you are running the Debian kernel, which is the LTS version out of the box, the 6.12, if I remember correctly. And this is fine. And because you have already like the backport Debian repo installed and configured, you could get the latest backport version from Debian. And as I'm speaking, I believe it was a 6.16, which is pretty recent. And I did that on the distro. Everything works fine, no issue at all. And, and this was a plus uh, to have the opportunity, you know, to upgrade your kernel if you think that the latest LTS is not good enough for your need. The third point I think is also really interesting is the fact that the distro comes with Flatpak already configured and ready to go, exactly like Linux uh, Mint uh, Ubuntu based version. So this is fluid. Uh, the store works very well, it's fast. And because Flatpak is ready to go, well, you can benefit from uh, the latest application, the latest one versus like, you know, uh, some of the Debian repos that might be a little bit uh, old or might become old in the, in the next month. You can have the latest application you want. So I'm thinking, for example, OBS. Well, you want to install OBS on this machine, you're going to have the latest version because you can choose the Flatpak one. And this is going to be a big plus for all the content creators out there. Now, when it comes to gaming performance, what you need to understand is that Cinnamon, as we speak, late uh, 2025, is not Wayland ready. So Debian right now supports Wayland by default if you install a desktop environment that supports it. So if you are running GNOME, or KDE, no problem, you're going to have the full Wayland experience. This is part of the Debian uh, 13 improvement. But for Cinnamon, they are still working on it. You have to understand it's a small team. And I've been following the transition between X11 and Wayland for Cinnamon. And I've seen like a lot, lot, lot of improvements for the last almost like 12 months. So they are getting there, but it's not perfect. So right now, you're going to be locked on X11 if you don't want to have the experimental experience of Cinnamon. So you can still log in Wayland Experimental uh, via the logging manager, 
But again, like the experience might, uh, you know, not be the best, but they are getting there. I do believe that their release goal for Cinnamon Wayland is going to be late uh, Q3 of 2026. But they are not really far from being there. But yeah, this, this, there is work to do, like, let's be clear. So if you are a gamer and decide to game on this machine, well, I really advise you to uh, stay on X11. Now, when it comes to performance, I would still recommend to use the backport version of the kernel, like that you have something a little bit more recent. If you want to go the step further, go with a custom kernel, uh, like a TKG one or well, the one you prefer, right? Uh, play with a, a different like SCADEX user space scheduler to have uh, a little bit like better, like 1% low and a better like responsive game. But if you don't really care, you should be fine. Just keep in mind that with X11, you're going to have less features than with Wayland. I'm thinking about uh, HDR. And also, if you have a multi-monitor setup with different refresh rate, well, X11 won't give you the best experience, unfortunately. So now let's jump into the negative. And you will see the negative. There is some, but not as much as I thought when I did the benchmark. I have to say... Uh, this was a pretty good experience. So I might be a little bit of a Debian fanboy, but I have to say like this, this was pretty neat to say the least. So the first negative, and I'm going to have to put it there, even if we talk about it before, is the fact that you don't have Wayland, right? And X11 is going to be somehow a limitation, right? So I, I tried to install Wayland. I did the benchmark in the experimental version and the gap in terms of performance, it's pretty big. You won't have a smooth experience with the experimental Cinnamon Wayland as we speak. The good news is like six months ago, when I was trying to launch, for example, like Shadow of the Tomb Raider benchmark, I wouldn't even get the game to launch. This time, the full benchmark went on and we lost something like, I don't know, 15%, if I remember correctly, 15% uh, performance versus x11 so not bad right it's 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 getting there but it's not ready uh, so i wouldn't recommend it for gaming now for content creation obviously the fact that you don't have wayland uh, is going to be limiting too especially if you are using obs uh, it's still possible to record your screen without wayland but i do believe like wayland give a, a little bit more of easiness better performance overall when you come to recording your own screen. So here it's a limitation of Cinnamon and the Linux Mint uh, team. I know they have a small team, they are working on it. But if you are really into created content, I don't think like this desktop environment right now is the best to achieve this. Would you be able to create content? Of course, but uh, there is right now easier solution, uh, more, I would say, fluid solution out there. I'm thinking about KGE or GNOME. Uh, it's, it's just easier to create content on those desktop environment. Now, another negative is, is that when I started to dive into the uh, different like uh, Linux Mint application, which are provided on Linux Mint and, and uh, basic, you know, the one on Ubuntu, uh, I noticed small difference. Uh, the biggest one was related to the driver manager. So, on Linux Mint, the Ubuntu version one, you have this application called Driver Manager, and you can go there and install the driver uh, via a GUI. It's super easy, right? On this one, uh, you don't have it anymore. It just does not exist. And what it means, it means that if you are an NVIDIA user, you're going to have to install the driver manually exactly as you are uh, installing them on a Debian distro. So it's relatively easy. Uh, I would recommend to use ext repo, install the CUDA repo, the official one uh, from NVIDIA, and then install the meta package for the NVIDIA driver. So you choose whether you want the open version or the closed version, and you should be fine, okay? But, you know, you, you need to be uh, kind of like, a, I would say, not a, a beginner. I would say, like, you need to be an intermediate type of Linux user to know this. I think Linux Mint on Ubuntu is a little bit uh, more user-friendly versus this one. 
So that, that will be the, the first big difference, right? The second difference I noticed was also related to the kernel manager. So on Linux Mint, you have also this little application where you can switch the kernel. Here, you can't. Okay, you can't do that via the GUI. You're going to have to install the backport kernel with the terminal. Again, more like an intermediate uh, type of usage uh, versus uh, Linux Mint, less user-friendly, I would say, overall. All right, so as you can see, there is not a lot of like negative regarding this LMD uh, distribution. I have to say, I was quite surprised. I did not expect uh, Linux Mint to run almost exactly the same uh, on Debian versus Ubuntu. I, I was kind of like perplexed at the beginning. It has its limitation. I do believe like Linux Mint right now is in a weird, weird like positioning versus the other distro simply because of Cinnamon and its non-support of Wayland. Uh, Wayland for the last like year and a half uh, did improve a lot, a lot of things uh, regarding gaming, content creation, uh, overall like user experience. I know a lot of people are hating on it, but the reality is that uh, most of the users out there are benefiting from Wayland. HDR, uh, multiple uh, screen with multiple refresh rate is a breeze on Wayland. And not having that type of support on a, a, a distribution like Linux Mint, it kind of like puts them behind versus any other distro, even Debian uh, with KDE, for example. But if you put that out of the way um, and, and you really think about the, the difference between like the Ubuntu version and the Debian version, it, it's not that big. Uh, I do believe it just comes around like your personal preference. Do you prefer running Ubuntu under the hood or do you prefer running Debian? Because the overall experience, is, it's kind of the same. Uh, you're going to have a little bit more, like I would say, work uh, to set up the Debian version because of the potential like driver you're going to have to push there. Uh, but then, uh, you know, like Debian is, uh, is, in my opinion, in a really, really good spot. You can have the benefits of the backport from Debian uh, for different like key packages. I'm thinking about the kernel. Uh, if you don't want to have some type of edec with a custom kernel, or you could maybe backport like Mesa. I don't I don't know if it's something you can do, but I'm pretty sure like this is a type of package uh, you could maybe backport if Debian is is too stable for you. Could be uh, something to think about. So. You know, I, I think uh, there, there is something there. There is something for Debian. I personally will go with Debian. Uh, is, is, there is no like bad decision, in my opinion. But it's really cool that the Linux Mint team is providing uh, two different bases for their operating system. And I'm, I'm, I'm super pleased about it. So, uh, you know, if, if for you, the fact that you don't have Wayland is... Uh, is a non-problem, it's fine. Well, I really encourage you to, to try it and, uh, you know, enjoy it. That's definitely a solid distro, in my opinion. So yes, uh, that's it, that's all for this review. Don't forget uh, to give a thumbs up and a comment in the description below. It really helps uh, the algorithm. Let me know if you want me to do something special uh, with LMD, maybe uh, some type of tutorial or, I don't know, some, something you, you would like me to do. Uh, for this distribution, but yeah, uh, quite uh, quite good surprise, to say the least. And also, also I can't forget that I want to thank all the members of La Crème de la Crème Club who are supporting the channel financially via PayPal, Patreon, YouTube membership, and everything else. You guys are the best. Thank you again, and see you in the next one. Bisous, bisous.